Want to make a podcast? Spotify's got a platform that lets you make one super easily, then distribute it everywhere and even earn money. All in one place for free. It's called Spotify for Podcasters and here's how it works. Spotify for Podcasters lets you record and edit podcasts right from your phone or computer, so no matter what your setup is like, you can start creating today. Then you can distribute your podcast to Spotify and everywhere else podcasts are heard. Video podcasts are also available on Spotify. With Spotify for Podcasters, you can even earn money in a variety of ways, including ads and podcast subscriptions. And best of all, it's totally free with no catch. Spotify for Podcasters has made our podcasting process so much easier and even has options like Q&As and polls so we can engage with listeners. I highly recommend you give it a try. Download the Spotify for Podcasters app or go to www.spotify.com slash podcasters to get started. The following contains descriptions of physical violence, sexual violence, and graphic descriptions of autopsies. Hey listeners, welcome to episode 48 of TGIC Podcast. I'm Jillian. And I'm Izzy. Okay, so quick announcement before we start. <laughs> <laughs> you may have already seen, but we are launching a second podcast called Toxic Positivity, and we are super excited about it. So you can go check out our trailer right now. Um, it's on Spotify and some, you know, the other random ones, but like yeah. not on Apple Podcasts yet because Apple Podcasts is being a pain in the ass. Yeah, they just got a grudge against us for some reason. And we're, work- we're working on it. Yeah, we are. It's coming soon to Apple Podcasts. Yes. But we are currently on Spotify where you can go check out our trailer, and the first two episodes will be out next Friday. Mm-hmm. So get really excited for that. We are starting this like it's like gonna be teen lifestyle-y kind of thing, I guess. Mm-hmm. But like also different. Like we want it to be a little bit Yeah. I don't know. We're very excited. We're about really this. excited about so, it. So if you like our personalities, if you like the show for our personalities and not banter, the true crime, um then you can go check out our new podcast. And if you hate our personalities, then I'm sorry. Then yeah, stick to this. <laughs> I'm um, sorry. <laughs> but like literally that new podcast just like a chance for us to kind of talk about everything that we would love to spend time talking about on here, but it's not really appropriate in most cases. Yeah. So well, yeah. We're excited. Like we're gonna have a lot of yeah. stuff I think. Just like literally it's just gonna be random. Like we're gonna pick a topic and we're just gonna talk, talk about, about it. it. And yeah, we're really excited. So go check it out. Um our first two episodes will be out next Friday. Um, anyway, today we will be covering the mysterious death of Annie Borjasan. So let's get started with some background. Uh, Annie Borjasan was born on February 7th of 1975 in Sweden. Okay, let me just say, your pronunciation is very on par. Oh, thank you. Not usually our strong suit. Google Translate really helped me out with this one. I'd like to thank um, the people behind Google Translate. Yes, thank you so much. And specifically the audio feature on Google Translate. <laughs> um, yeah. So I'm really, really proud of myself for that one. She's got one of those cool, like, uh, accents over the O. Oh, I don't really yeah. know what those are called. They don't use those in Spanish, which is the only is it language like a, I know. Um, um, umla? It's like something... An umla? I don't know. Like, I feel like it has kind of a name like that. I don't okay, know. Okay, okay. Anyways. Anyway. Probably wrong. The double but, dots? I like yes, the double dots. the double dots. Anyway, uh, she grew up in Sweden and later moved to Edinburgh, Scotland in 2004. And she returned to Sweden in August of 2005. Annie was a musician and a linguist, and she actually spoke fluently in five different languages. Uh, holy crap. Including English, yeah, like, I, can, I can't even I imagine. could never. I've been taking Spanish since I was five and can't, like, form a sentence barely, so. Same, yeah. Um, it's a little rough over here. Uh, she traveled around Europe, actually, in a band. Okay, sick. Yeah, that's super cool. She's also very athletic, so just a pretty cool person, well-rounded. Mm-hmm. Uh, she actually returned to Edinburgh in October of 2005 because she had really enjoyed her time living there and was looking forward to spending some more time there. Mm-hmm. And at the time, she was unemployed, but she was receiving unemployment like supplement from the Swedish government, so she was not like facing any financial struggle. Um, I, Sweden is very generous, I believe, and progressive, with yeah, because they, you know, they got the happiest people ever over there because. People don't have so much pressure to work. Yeah, like, because, like, there's... Isn't school yeah. free there, too? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. So, Sweden's really just living it up over there, so... Yeah, and Sweden's gorgeous. Isn't it cold? It is cold, but, like, it's so I pretty. I do well in the cold. <laughs> I've always wanted to visit Sweden. Anyways. Anyways, she was not fancy any, facing any financial difficulty, and she was just kind of, you know, checking out Edinburgh again for a little while, really just kind of, you know, enjoying her life. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm going to get into the timeline. The past few weeks, I feel like we've had a pretty... Oh, no. Tamla Horsford. That was a pretty extensive one. Yeah, it was. But um, at least our last episode, we didn't have a very big one. But this one is pretty hefty. 
So we're going to start out. So actually during a night out, not long before her death, Annie actually met a man who claimed that his name was Martin Leslie. And she used to go out like, not a lot, but like a normal amount. Like she was in her, she wasn't in her 20s, right? Yeah, like late 20s. Early yeah, 30s. so, yeah. So, Martin Leslie was, like, in reality, Martin Leslie was a rugby player from New Zealand who had actually been on the Scotland team, and this is what they called it, capped what 37 times. I have no idea. I don't know if he played for their team 37 times. I don't know how it works. Is but that anyways, like an award? I have, I is literally like a have goal? no clue. They I just really called it rugby. capped. I, I don't, don't either. I don't know what rugby is, barely. It's like football and soccer combined, right? Yeah. Or did I just totally make that? No, no, no. It's like football and soccer combined, <laughs> okay, I think. Okay. I've never watched one, but I'm interested to watch it now. Um, but anyways, this rando creepo was not actually Martin Leslie. Oh, okay. At, like, at this point, it's just like, okay, this guy's clearly making some stuff up to pick up attractive women and make her swoon with tales of international stardom. But that's just, like, a one-night occurrence, right? Like, trying to pick someone up at a bar or whatever. Okay, wait, so she met this guy, and then he, like, faked being a rugby player type? Exactly. Okay. He wasn't actually Martin Leslie. He just said that he was, and okay. he had all these tales of, like, playing. Like, he was very knowledgeable about it. Like, it seemed very well-researched scam. Oh, like that time in New Girl when she may pretend to be one of the Romney kids? Yes, exactly. <laughs> gotcha, okay. Um, so... Actually, this wasn't a one-night occurrence. Seemingly, right before her death, she actually ran into Martin once again at her neighborhood swimming pool. Um, and she, like, immediately noticed him because, first off, he was, like, a muscular rugby body type guy. And she made it known that that was her type. Like, her friends knew that. So she immediately took note of him at the pool. And she recognized him, right? Um, not to mention, Annie was, like, a huge rugby fan and, like, frequented the Murrayfield Warriors rugby pl- ru- I was like a total mouthful. Murrayfield Warriors Rugby Club as well as games there. So she knew that she had seen this guy before and compounded with the fact that he almost seemed like too good to be true. Like he was her type. He loved rugby, whatever. It made her honestly feel uneasy. Okay. And like the fact that he was so knowledgeable about rugby as well as like his supposed career. And he also knew like weird like familial like, facts about this guy. Weird. Yeah, made his actions even more weird. So, like, shortly after the second meeting with so-called Martin, she alerted her friends and family about her aversion to him. And she, her friend Maria actually said in an interview that this man made her feel, quote, a little scared, and that, quote, she had now decided to try and keep away from this man. Okay, wait, I have to clarify because I'm a little bit confused. Did mm-hmm. she know that he wasn't this guy, or did she just suspect she just suspected. I mean, okay. she was really knowledgeable about rugby, so I'm assuming she probably knew that this guy was, like, not Bullshit. actually this okay. guy. And uh, actually, her family said that she had, like, re- quote, regarded him as a sexual predator, and she was planning to cut off all contact with him. Okay. Which is just, like, really weird. And I just want to say, I wanted to preface this before we talk about her actual death and, like, the days leading up to her death, just because it seemed like it was a really big deal yeah, to nice. show her, like, steady decline almost. Because her, the people in Annie's life had actually became increasingly worried about her mental health in the days leading to her death. Um, I mean, they were worried about her mental state due to, like, really odd and seemingly troubled conversations over the phone to them. And actually, there was one staff at the L- Linton Court Apartments where she lived that claimed she was, quote, depressed and that Annie had actually told her that she needed to, quote, take care of something. Okay, weird. So just, like, all these things kind of leading up to her death, just, like, immediately, like, alarm bells going yeah. off in her family and friend's head. Um, so December 1st of 2005, Annie's mother actually claimed that she made a call to her, and on the call, Annie responded to the statement that her family is becoming increasingly worried about her with, quote, you have to respect this, but I have to take care of myself. Okay. Yeah. So it's like kind of weird. Okay. And I will add, following Annie's death, a Scottish police officer actually came forward and said that there was no record of this call ever happening and that she hadn't even received any calls in the few days leading to her death. What? Yeah. So really weird. Wait, what? That's weird. Yeah. So we'll talk about this later on because it's like becomes kind of a big thing. But so it's just like weird. Like, why would her mom make this up? She wouldn't make it up. So why are there no call logs? Yeah, that's really bizarre. Exactly. Um, So December 3rd of 2005, which was two days after this, CCTV footage actually picked up the last known sighting of Annie, like, last, like, definitive sighting sighting 
of Annie in the airport on the way for her planned trip back to Sweden. So it's known that Annie had actually told her hairdresser days before that she was going to return back from Sweden on Monday, December 5th. And so, yeah, this was a planned trip. Tripped. This was a planned trip. <laughs> Everybody knew she was taking it, whatever. So she actually made the 32-mile journey to Prestwick Airport and to get to this flight. And she actually had two failed attempts to withdraw cash from an ATM at the Glasgow Central Station because of insufficient funds. So... I think it's weird that we were talking about earlier how she had, like, support, like, financial support from the Swedish government, but she couldn't withdraw money from multiple different ATMs. It's possible, though, that maybe she just had enough to, you know, kind of cover, like, rent and food Yeah, and didn't have enough, like, liquid cash. Yeah, like, like, you know, available extra money. Yeah. So she had enough to live on, I believe. Exactly, but maybe she just didn't have enough to book a plane ticket. Yeah. And it's actually suspected that she had been trying to catch the 6.30 flight to Gothenburg, um, but she hadn't pre-booked a dick, a dick, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> a ticket, a ticket. I cannot talk today. Anyways, a ticket. So, like, at the time, I, f- can you still do this? Can you just, like, go to the airport and be like, okay, I want a ticket to New York? I mean, I think you can. I think, yeah, I don't see why not. Yeah. I think it's just people don't. Yeah. Because it's, like, way more expensive. It's way more stuff. expensive and flights book up really quickly. And also, like, her mom had been actually, had known about her going, wanting to go to this flight to get to Gothenburg, like, at the same time. So, mm-hmm. it was just, like, whatever. So, she actually didn't have enough money to buy this pre book ticket. So, she only spent, on the CCTV footage, they only saw that she had spent a total of 4 minutes and 41 seconds in the airport. But the really weird thing about this is that, first off, she driving, got there, like, A 32-mile journey. So, like, weird. Why would you only spend four minutes there? And also, the footage captured shows her making distances in the airport that could later not possibly be reenacted by investigators or reenactors without them, like, sprinting. Wait, what? Which she was not doing in the footage. Yeah. So, like, they think that potentially, like, the footage was altered or skewed, maybe the timestamps, or, like, it was cut together, like, kind of like we saw in Elisa Lamb. Yeah. But, yeah, so she was only there for four minutes, like, almost five minutes in the footage, like, that's what they saw. Is it possible that they were, like, assuming that different people were her? Like, it was, like, they were catch- capturing different people in the footage or something? I mean, I guess it could be possible, but, like, they know what she was wearing and stuff. So it's just, yeah, like, it's weird, weird to me that she was there for, like... And it all, all of the footage saw her walking. None of it was her running. So, that's just so weird. But why would this footage be altered in the first place? Also, I have to assume that this is a pretty big airport because yeah. it's the capital of Scotland. Yeah. So, I'd assume it's pretty big. And, like, the trying to imagine her, like, getting, like, far distances across the airport without, like... And, like, only being there for four minutes seems very strange. Like, super weird. Um, and then the footage captured her leaving the airport and going into the parking lot, and they don't know why, but they said that the footage actually captured kind of an angered look on her face, probably frustrated. I mean, it makes sense. She couldn't get a plane ticket. Um, and at about 4.30 that same afternoon, well, first off, her leaving the airport, that was about 3.15. There was a potential sighting of her at, like, a bus station, but they didn't know if it was her, like, it was someone with a backpack, like, it could have been her... Or it could have been someone else. Or it could have totally been someone else. Yeah. Um, But they think it could have been her because at about 4.30 that same afternoon, two men were walking along Prestwick Beach, which is not far from the airport, but, like, you can't walk. Mm -hmm. And they claim to have seen an unnerving figure standing at the edge of the water, motionless and face towards the sea. They couldn't tell if it was a man or a woman, but they just no- like noted that it was weird. Okay. So they continued their walk and eventually turned back around to get the way that they had come, and the person was still there in the exact same position, staring at the water. Weird. And, okay, this is what pisses me off. They, the men claimed that they were concerned about, in, about the figure, and they believed that the person may have been contemplating suicide. But they left. Anyways, <laughs> they left. They just walked and left. Didn't talk to the person or anything. I mean, it's one thing if that hadn't crossed your mind and you are just At like, the okay, time. weird person, just left. 
But like to be like, oh, I wonder if they're about to commit suicide, and then to go and then to leave. It just that makes no make, sense. That doesn't make any sense. That doesn't connect. Yeah. And no. actually, these people came forward to the police. These men came forward to the police, and the police never asked if the person fitted Annie's characteristics. They just didn't. Um, but there was a second report. Were they looking for her at the time? Yeah, this oh, was after her death. Weird. That's really weird. Um, so there was a second report by another person that claimed to have seen a woman fitting Annie's description on the same beach at the same time talking to two unidentified men. Um, and this, of course, they believe that this was Annie. So maybe they kind of connected the two and were like, okay, maybe that was her and she was talking to two men like at the same time or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's like it strengthens the other witness testimony and makes it pretty clear that Annie was on the beach that day. But still, like it's weird that they didn't ask the first two guys if yeah. it, yeah. Um, so they're pretty sure that that was Annie on the beach that day, looking out towards the water. And um, but I will say, how can you know that someone is contemplating suicide if they're just looking at the water? Yeah, that's. A stretch. I, it's a little bit of a stretch. I mean, unless you were doing something really weird. But, like, I don't... But I'd like to be standing still by the water. Isn't that big of a red flag to me? And also, like, they didn't even get close enough to the point where they could tell if this was a man or a woman. Yeah. So... so people are just weird. Some people do just stand by the water. Yeah, like, people just look at the water. Like, maybe it was a pretty day outside. Whatever. Yeah. I don't know. So, December 4th, which was the next morning, at about 8.30 in the morning, a witness who was actually walking their dog on the beach found Annie's body. And all of her belongings were still with her, including her bag, which included her Swedish passport, Swedish passport and two library books, which she had actually intended to return to a library in Sweden upon her return. And they also she also had her jacket. So, yeah... And it's only really worth mentioning because it kind of suggests that due to currents, her body was placed there. Like, her stuff would have been washed away because of tides and currents and stuff. Yeah. So it's weird that everything was still with her. Yeah, but it's also weird that all of, like, her identifying passport was found with her if someone put her body there. Exactly. Yeah. Like, that means, like, someone wanted her to be, like, found and identified. Yeah. So it's just weird. I don't know. And it was also later found that she had unknown traces of DNA on her hands, kind of suggesting that someone else had, like, touched her or something, or she had touched someone else. Yeah, or she, you know, touched a doorknob that someone sneezed on. Exactly. I'm just saying, like... Um, but, like, the days later, the prior to the conduction of the autopsy, the police already came out and revealed to the public that there was, quote, no suspicious circumstances surrounding her death, meaning that they didn't believe that it was, like, foul play. Yeah. And... Due to this, their belief that it was suicide, no steps were taken towards an investigation, which I just find insane. So no forensic team was even called to the scene. No swabs and no samples were ever taken. No DNA testing, no water sampling. And it was just never looked into further. Like, she actually had some missing belongings, which included a fleece jacket and a filofax, which I think is like a little, like, notebook thing. Okay. Which... Everyone knows she carried with her everywhere. So these are the two known things missing from her bag. And they know because of CCTV footage she wasn't wearing it. Um, But the filofax would actually contain a lot of her money and contact information of every single person she knew. And that wasn't on her. Yeah, okay, but here's what I think is weird. I could understand, like, someone taking that as, like, an identification identification thing but like uh-huh. why not take her passport yeah why not take her passport and why take the fleece jacket yeah like that's weird to me and also like did she have two jackets on her yeah weird okay not like that weird but like still kind of a little <laughs> just, weird. just like weird regular weird um no why isn't it com- like i thought it was just commonplace even if it was suspected to be a suicide that they'd like identify stuff exactly like just like i like check for stuff and like I don't know like I thought it was like you treat everything like an investigation until even if you do rule it a suicide like exactly so it just seems like kind of some like botched police work a little yeah, bit yeah and like you think that they're doing like witnesses you'd probably want to check out and stuff like yeah even though it's a suicide like I thought it was kind of a place for people to investigate that stuff exactly I don't understand why they wouldn't look into it at least a little bit further yeah okay so I'm gonna talk a little bit about her autopsy So, her cause of death was drowning, which was proven by water in her lungs. Mm -hmm. And there was this unexplained, like, depression in her skin, which is, like, kind of weird. Yeah. 
Um, and then she had scratches and significant bruising on her arm, specifically her right arm, and bruises on her temple and behind her ear. Which is weird. Like, okay, if you were drowning, like, I think it's totally possible that in the water you could sustain injuries yeah, like, like that. Yeah, yourself on stuff. But yeah, but, like... I, in all of those places, like, you'd have to, like, fall in a very strange manner to hit all of that. Yeah, and, like, also drowning in the ocean. Yeah, like, you wouldn't hit, like, see, I can understand, like, hitting a rock or something, but you're not going to hit a rock in the ocean based on, if you were yeah. in deep enough water to drown. Like, what? It's, something is off about that for yeah. me. Yeah. And behind your, like, behind your ear, but then also on your arm. Yeah, and, like, scratches all over you. Like, where are yeah. you getting scratches in the ocean? Because you could, but, like, then the water probably wouldn't be that deep, like, to actually be drowning. Like, yeah, it's really throwing me off a little bit. Okay. They also discovered indicators that Annie had died in fresh water and then moved to salt water. Which is weird. Yeah, like, that kind of confuses me, too. Um, they could make, like, this distinction through tiny shells found in her tissue that were only found in fresh water. Yeah. Which and is it's weird. Who moved her from like fresh water to salt water? Like Yeah, and like tiny shells and like I think they found like traces of algae or something in her system yeah. too that was specific to fresh water. Weird. Um it's also important to note that traces of this could have been found in her like bone marrow due to drinking tap water. But that doesn't no. I know it's possible. It's I, possible. They, but do you like, know how much information they can find out about people based on the water they drink? Like you can like if you were to die, they can, like, identify where you were from based on, like, your t- dental records, but, but, like, not necessarily, like, your actual identification dental records, but, like, through, like, seeing how water affected your teeth. That's insane. They can see out the location yeah. in which you came from. That's so I weird. think that is one of the coolest thing about, like, identifying Police work, people. yeah. Yeah, because, like, you can literally find out so much based on, like, the water that people drank for most of their life. Oh, my God, that's really weird. Yeah. Anyway... That could have, that's actually a possibility, like, that she died in the salt water and the fresh water thing was just, like, from drinking regular Like, coincidental water. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we'll never actually figure that out because Swedish authorities refused to conduct any other testing. Ugh. In a second autopsy report, they noted that a lot of her hair had been cut off roughly, which, like, was considered to be something that, like, a killer would do. Yeah. And it was then discovered that the undertaker had done this themselves because they claimed her hair had been matted from, like, debris and seawater. Which is just weird. But that's, like, weird. That's really not... That's really strange. Yeah. And, like, an undertaker, isn't that someone who, like, dresses people up before they get put in the ground? I don't understand that. Like, I'm... Yeah. That's really, really strange. Yeah. Um... So, I, yeah, it's just, like, I don't know. It's, the whole thing is very weird. Like, it's weird that they, like, would have thought this was a killer, and then they're like, oh, wait, the Undertaker did this? Never mind. Yeah. But Never then mind. also, like, I don't know. It's, like, weird. Yeah. That, like, the, all the, especially all the debris in her hair, because, like, how long was she in the ocean then? Like, they couldn't even tell you how long she was in the ocean for. Exactly. Like, I, this is not, like, <laughs> available information. Anyway. No, like, none of this is making sense. Yeah. I don't know. During the days following her death, Annie's mother logged into her Hotmail account and discovered that it had been, like, completely wiped. Which, which weird. weird. <laughs> what the fuck? That was so weird. Was I'm really sorry. Weird. <laughs> um, so, Maria, who was Annie's best friend, actually started to do some digging on her own. Go, Maria. Yeah, Maria. Um, she discovered that after looking into her phone record, she had no recorded calls or communications with Annie for, like, months before her death. And all the while, Maria was still having issues with her email and was receiving, like, weird, creepy calls. Weird. Like, none of this is making sense. I hate the cell record thing, especially, like, 2000 cell records, because the... Because you got bills, right? Yeah, there was, like, all these bills. All of it was so trapped. So, like, in order to, like, wipe it, like, entirely... That's, like, hard. I think so. I mean... Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's, like, difficult. Because you get, like, you get billed for individual calls. Exactly. And individual text messages, too. Especially because, I don't know if this would have made a difference, but, like, her mom was living in Sweden, she was living in Scotland. That's it could a have different cost, country. Yeah. That might have been more money. I don't really know what EU rules are, are or anything. Yeah. But, or if, oh, was Scotland even in the EU then? Honestly, I'm so I'm lost. I'm so lost on Brexit a little bit. But, like... Wouldn't that have been, like, more? And, like, at least they could have tracked it going outside of her country, like... Yeah, it's just weird. It's really strange. Okay, so we're gonna go over some suspects and theories. This is something we haven't done in a while, actually. Yeah, actually. Um, and these are kind of interesting. 
Honestly. Okay, so the first one we gotta talk about suicide. I mean, it's always a potential, and also that's what, like, the police ruled yeah. it was. Um, so, I mean, her family said that, or multiple witnesses, like, people who knew her, said that she seemed, like, kind of depressed in recent days and a little bit unstable almost. Like, that's what her family was saying. She was just kind of shaken up and almost, like, not her usual self in the days before her death. And, I mean, we know that she was making big plan, like, a potential big change in her life from her apartment person, person who was working at her apartment. <laughs> and, I mean, the decision to, like, commit suicide and complete it is, like, very split decision, right? Isn't it, yeah. like, a matter of seconds you can decide? So, like, maybe following going to the airport and seeing, like, the insufficient funds or maybe there was something else that was going on that could have caused her. And that was, like, a trigger for her. Yeah, it was a trigger for her. And, um, I mean, obviously, like, the witnesses that were on the beach and said that she, like, it was just kind of odd seeing her, like, standing in front of the water. I mean, and then also, she did dro- dive drowning. There was no other, like, ma- not manner of death, but, yeah. like... That was the only... That was the only thing found. Ruling, yeah. So, I think this is always a big possibility, but compounded with everything else, I don't think it's very... Yeah, it's I don't just, know. The fact that there's weird other stuff going on makes me think that if the other investigation had been done, like, maybe something else could have turned up. Exactly. Which brings me back to this, like, Martin Leslie dude. Like, this, like, creeper who she was, like, feeling unsettled about, mm-hmm. and, like, she was telling people she was creeped out by him, actually called him a sexual predator. Yeah. Which is, like, I mean, it's one thing to be, like, yeah, he's a creeper, but to say specifically he's a sexual predator... Is, like, a big step. makes me think that there was, like, something else that happened that maybe she wasn't telling people about. Yeah. Like, he's, I don't know, he could have made comments, he could have actually assaulted her, like, I don't really know. Exactly. But, like, it makes me think that there's something else at play that maybe she didn't share with other people. Exactly. And so maybe this guy was just such a creep that he killed her. Yeah. And, like, also it makes me think with the whole, like, passport thing, maybe he didn't think to check for her passport, and that's, like, he Mm -hmm. gives me, like, amateur killer vibes. Exactly, like, very messy. Like, oh, yeah, let me take her philo facts so they can't find, like, my number in here. Oh, yeah. But then maybe, like, I forgot about the passport. I don't know. Yeah, and we honestly, we know nothing about this guy, so you never know. Maybe he was, like, some weird hacker and he deleted all her emails. Like, maybe they had had correspondence or something before this. And I actually saw somewhere that she had tried to send an email to him or something, but, like, I saw it in one source, and it was never mentioned again, and also that they know that her email is wiped, so... Yeah. Anyway, yeah. guy is just really weird. weird, and definitely, I think, could have... should have been further investigated and actually found out if he yeah. was, like, a legitimate person. Or, like, exactly. Like, with. they yeah. never looked into him, never found him. Um, and then the last theory, this one's kind of outland... <laughs> kind of outlandish. Oh, I like this one. I like this one, but, yeah. Um, so, uh, this is a CIA theory. So Maria, who was her best friend, was actually doing some digging and found out that there was a CIA agent at the time in Scotland that was using Annie's name, including first and last name, and investigating super controversial stuff. That's a weird coincidence. Super weird coincidence. Like, no coincidence and she's in crime. Scotland, too. Yeah. Like, I just, I think that's so weird. And, I mean, think about this, like, um, all the call logs were all weird, the security footage was messed up. Yeah. Um, and, like, we were her, talking, like, all that, like, that stuff that, like, is hard to change. Exactly. And, like, her email was all wiped. Like, and then you have like, to have access to that. Yeah. Who has access to that? The CIA. Mm-hmm. And all the weird calls to Maria, too. Yeah. And, I mean, like, the weird bruises and, like, kind of inconsistent injuries combined with, like, the bad investigation on behalf of the police. Like, maybe it was a potential cover-up. Yeah, and maybe some of, like, some of their initial stuff when they were, like, actually checking things, maybe it, that was their theory, and then they got a call from the CIA that was, like, don't mess with this shit. Yeah. And then they were, like, like never mind. Yeah, and then maybe that's why the Sweden, like, people won't want to investigate her death for yeah. too. Like, it's just... I kind of like this theory. I kind of like this theory, too. I think it's possible. The only thing that seems weird to me is the passport thing. The passport thing is weird. But also, maybe they left the passport on her so she could be identified and made it look more like a suicide. Exactly. That no one, like, took anything Because, like, maybe they were trying to kill this other CIA agent, and then they accidentally killed, like, Annie, thinking that it was the other CIA. Like, it's just, like, it's really interesting. I know. It's just kind of nuts. Yeah. But I kind of like that theory. It's a little more fun. Yeah, a little more interesting. It's like our Not hitman fun. theories. That was probably a bad word. But interesting. Interesting. But yeah, this was the mysterious death of Annie Borjasan. 
Tune in next Friday for the first two episodes of our Woo! new podcast, Toxic Positivity, and listen to a new episode of TGIC in two weeks. In the meantime, follow us on Instagram at tgic.podcast. Bye! Hey, random podcast listener, I'm Jillian. And I'm Izzy. And we're the hosts of TGIC Podcast, which is one of the only true crime podcasts created by teens. But that's not what we're talking about right now. We want to introduce our new lifestyle podcast, Toxic Positivity. Toxic Positivity is a teen lifestyle podcast embracing the best and worst parts of adolescence in the 21st century. We will cover a lot of topics from stress and high school to discovering your sexuality and saving the environment. Listen to new episodes every other Friday, and our first epi- two episodes will be released on February 25th. So make sure to listen wherever you get your podcasts. Follow us on Instagram at toxicpositivity.podcast. Bye! Bye.